All right, so we are at the Google Collaboratory for the hands-on piece, and we are going to use a library which is super popular for this particular task, that is treating the imbalanced data. This library is called Imbalance Learn. In short, we call it ImbLearn. This might not come with the default installation with a lot of IDs, so you'll have to run this line of code to perform its installation, and then you can use rest of the code very easily. Once this installation is done, we can call the basic libraries, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn. And now, from the imbalanced learn or imlearn library, using specific modules, we are calling certain classes like random undersampler and atomic links. And from the oversampling module, we are calling the random oversampler, smoot, and adassin. We will also be doing a combination of smoot and atomic together, and that will be through imlearn combined module. Finally, this scikit-learn library is providing us the data set, which is a very popular cancer data set. This is the one that we are going to use for practice. And we'll also be needing train test split from scikit-learn using the model selection module. Let me just run this code and all the libraries now are in place. So to begin with, we need to access the data set. And like I said, we will be calling it from scikit-learn data sets, some inbuilt data sets available with scikit-learn library. So we are going to load this specific data set using this syntax. This is the name of the data set. And then we can convert it to a data frame format. So we'll have to write data.data .data because this to begin with does not come in a data frame format. We have to convert it to a data frame and we have to mention the proper feature names. So this is the source of the data and this data.feature names is going to give us the column titles. Finally, we also are storing the target column, which is data.target. If you read the scikit-learn documentation, how to load the inbuilt data sets, you'll be more familiar with the dot data and dot feature names and dot target attributes. Let's run this. Let's look at the first few observations using head. So this data set is essentially about detection of cancer. It has various fields which are a part of the general FNAC test, which is fine needle aspiration test, typically performed for detecting breast cancer. So these are different attributes of that test. The target column is about capturing whether the test found the sample to be malignant, which is confirming cancer, or benign, which is denying the presence of cancer. Now, the target column in our case is already zero and one to begin with, but for our plots and all, we'd want to change it to a general M and B. M stands for malignant and B stands for benign, just to remember it easily. So let's just map the target columns 0 to M and 1 to B. That's what we're doing here. And then we can check what is the kind of ratio of malignant to benign samples. And here we see we have 357 cases where the test result was benign and 212 cases where the test result was malignant. Now, it is not that badly skewed because at times when we deal with data sets, they can be very badly skewed. And, and some of the data sets naturally are like that. For example, if you talk about, let's say, at a very reputed company, they had limited number of positions. There will be a lot of applications, but very limited candidates would have been selected. That's an imbalanced data. Similarly, if you talk about a bank detecting default, there would be limited cases of defaults when we talk about any kind of loan, let's say a home loan or a personal loan. The percentage of defaults would be much limited. So a lot of data sets tend to have an imbalance, and, and even for cancer for that matter, you would not have this high a proportion if the sample was done randomly. But we can imagine people who would have gone for FNAC test would have shown some symptoms. And that's why you have a relatively higher proportion of malignancy. If you just randomly pick people off the street and try to check whether they have cancer or not, the proportion would have been much lesser. Anyway, it is not perfectly balanced and that's what we are going to treat. So let's just create a couple of plots to understand how good or bad it looks like visually. So what we're doing is we're creating two plots. This is a categorical variable and we are creating two plots. First is a pie chart and second is a count plot. Essentially, we are using matplotlib library to get the pie chart and we are using the seaborn library to get the count plot. These are basic syntax. So to begin with, we are mentioning the figure and the axes, some inputs that we want these plots side by side. So we're dividing the plotting area into one row and two columns. Each space would contain one plot, pie chart and count plot next to each other. We've also mentioned a custom figure size here. And then we've given some inputs related to the colors of both the categories so that we can distinctly identify. Now for pie chart, which is axis zero, 
we are going to look at the value counts, which is essentially this output. We'll also be internally converting it to percentages. And then we'll also be displaying the labels using the value counts dot index. So this is the value counts output. Dot index would be this B and M, benign and malignant respectively. Start angle 90 is going to start drawing the angles from the positive Y axis. And we've mentioned the colors as per our custom input. Similarly, for C born, we are saying that our color palette is customized using these two colors. And then we are creating a count plot. This internally takes the input with respect to the axis. So we are saying this will be index one. Axis zero, the first plot is pie chart. Axis one, which is the second plot, is going to be a count plot. And finally, to segregate these plots nicely, we've used tight layout. Let me run this. So this is how you get it. Pretty much the same information. Malignant count is around 200 and benign count is around 350. And if we convert this to percentages, this is how you see the distribution. 62.7% cases were benign and 37.3% cases were malignant. Now we can separate X and Y. So we are segregating the target column from the rest of the data and we are doing a train test split. Please note that oversampling and undersampling techniques will always be applied only on the train data. The test data is your proxy to the future data. So you never change the proportions. They're supposed to be in a certain way and you leave it untouched. So for example, if you're working on a data which is relative to defaults as a bank identifies them, and let's say the overall default percentage is always less than 2%. So in future also, the default percentage will remain close to 2%. Yes, while training, while learning about it, I might study all the default samples more closely because I want to focus on those. So keeping this in mind, the oversampling or undersampling is always applied only on the train data, never on the overall data or the test data. Let's divide the data into two parts. We've taken the test size as 20% of the overall data and we've mentioned a random state just for reproducibility so that we get the same split. We're writing a simple function so that we don't have to repeat this step every time for every type of oversampling or undersampling technique that we study. It'll take two inputs. First is the resampled target column and a title input. And we mentioned the figure size. This is essentially a pie chart where we have the value counts. We have given how you want to display the decimal places up to one decimal place and everything else similar to what we saw earlier. So let's just define this function and we'll be using this conveniently every time. To begin with, we first talk about random undersampler. Because a random undersampler is going to randomly pick up the observations from the majority class, it is important that we mention a random state so that every time you refresh your code, you're removing same record. The syntax then is just to call fit underscore resample on this random undersampler. Fit underscore resample on what? always on the train data, so X train and Y train, and it's going to give us the output, which will be X random undersampled, Y random undersampled. And we are also looking at a pie chart. So see, it has brought benign and malignant to 50-50. To begin with, they were not equal. It has brought them to 50-50. But in the process, what it would have done is, it would have dropped some benign observations to the extent that they have come equal. Let's check how was the skewness initially so these were the counts we remember, benign 281 and malignant 174. What are the counts after we applied the random undersampler? If you see, it has taken the benign equal to the malignant numbers. So a random undersampler doesn't have to give us a 50-50 treatment. There is an option wherein we can pass a parameter called sampling strategy and give a certain ratio. So let's say I give a ratio of 0.7 and I rerun this code, let's see what happens. So see, it has not really brought it to 50-50 now. What is this 0.7? So this 0.7 is nothing but a ratio of minority to majority observations. What does it mean? For every 100 majority observations, we've got 70 minority observations. If you don't give this input, it's going to make them equal. But if you want to control it, because these are synthetic records, if you want to have a control on it that we don't want an equal representation, it's just that we want to increase the proportion of minorities. So to begin with, in our case, this was around 37. If I pass this as 0.7, it has brought it to 41.2. A little more compared to what this proportion was, if this helps us learn a little better. Let's say we make it to 80 or 0.8, what happens? So we started with 37.3 
and we have added another 7% or a little more than 7% if that helps us identify the two classes a little better. So this is nothing but a ratio of minority to majority observations. Minority as you would want it after the imbalance treatment and majority is the actual. For every 100 majority observations, we are adding 80 minority observations. Now, if you do not mention a sampling strategy, it's always going to give the output as 50-50. And in the process, if you want to see how many records have been removed, we can take a difference between the original data and the undersampled data. And this tells us that it has removed 107 records. But from where? From the majority. Because this is undersampling. Just like this, we have a random oversampler. Pretty much the same syntax. It's just that the name is random oversampler. And let's see what it does. So this again has brought it to 50-50. Let's look at the original scenario. We had a class imbalance. Benign were more compared to malignant. Oversampling would have taken the count of malignants equal to benign. Let's run this. So see, now you've increased the number of records. Why? Because you've taken the number of malignants equivalent to benign. So this 174 here has become 281 now. In the process, how many records have been added? Of course, now I'll have to take a difference between the oversampled output and the original data. Shape zero basically means the number of rows, and that's what we are looking at. So we've added 107 records here, as we can see. Once again, here also we can control this. We can mention an input for sampling strategy, which will be again a ratio of minority to majority. Now coming to the Tomac links. You remember in this case, we undersampled only those majority observations which were very close to the minority observations. So we are doing that selectively here and let's see what happens. If you see the syntax for all these is nearly identical. It's just that you're calling a different class here now. So this is Tomac links. And again, we do a fit resample on train, always on train, and we look at the pie chart. So, so this has become easy for us. Why? Because we've written a function earlier. So we just have to keep on changing the input and it will accordingly adapt when it shows the output. So if you see, this has not brought the outcome to 50-50, but it has definitely increased the proportion. We had the original proportion as 37.3 and 62.7, whereas it's now 39.1 and 60.9. It has taken care of those cases which were very close to the minority observation and has dropped those majority observations. If you check the outcome, the original imbalance pretty much stays the way it was, but what is the outcome after we've applied the Tomac links? So you can see that number of 281 has reduced to 271. Basically, it has dropped 10 records from the majority class. If you want to take the difference between the two, the actual train and after undersampling, it shows 10. So minority class observations stay untouched. Majority class observations, which are very close, have been dropped. This would tend to increase the classification power of a model. That's the intent. But it works only if you have these observations in a close proximity. Now coming to the most popular technique, which is SMOT, and we are looking at the classic SMOT. Once again, SMOT would also have an option to accommodate the sampling strategy, and we are doing the exact same syntax. So we are doing a fit resample on train and looking at the outcome. It's by default going to give us a 50-50 balance treatment, but like I said, we can control it using sampling strategy. If you check the original imbalance, it looked like this. After SMOT, it's oversampling, so it would have taken malignants equivalent to benign. And that's how it is. So this 174 has gone to 281 now. If you want to check the difference as to how many records have been added, we can simply check the difference like this. Also at times, to give equal emphasis to the classes and to make the classification easier, we may do a combination of SMOT and TOMIC. TOMIC was dropping the majority observations close to the minority observations and SMOT was oversampling using the linear interpolation. A combination of that is also available in MLearn, which is called SMOT-TOMIC. If we do this, it is first going to apply SMOT, which means it's first going to do oversampling using the linear interpolation as we explained, and then it's going to drop those majority observations which are very close to the minority observation. Let's apply this and let's look at the outcome. It's going to be slightly different compared to what we've been seeing. The output is 50-50, but the numbers are going to be slightly different. So the original Y-train combination stays the same, but let's see what's the smooth tomic output like. If you see, it's not 281, 281, it's taking it to 272 and 272. Initially, it would have brought it to 281 and 281, and then it chose to drop nine such cases from the majority or the benign class, which were very close to the malignant class. 
effectively we've added some records so we want to take a difference between the oversample data and the original data 89 records have been added and finally coming to adasin which is smart because it builds further on the smote and it essentially decides on oversampling based on the complex decisions that it has to make with respect to the minority so it's going to create synthetic records around the minority classes which are difficult to classify which are essentially closer to the majority again the syntax is pretty identical we can do adasin here and we can do a fit resample and get the output it's nearly 50 50 not exactly 50 50 but pretty close and if you want to see how these numbers are so this is again an oversampling technique what do you expect you expect the minority observations to have increased so this number of 174 has been taken to 283 in fact it's two more observations compared to the majority observations how many records have we effectively added 109 records so this completes the hands-on piece i hope you got an idea about how oversampling and undersampling actually works and why it may be needed undersampling essentially would be used only in cases when you have a lot of data where in dropping the records would not really affect your ability to gain insights from the data but in majority of cases when you have limited data will tend to prefer oversampling techniques hope this video gives you a clear idea on this topic thank you